Guys, everyone makes mistakes, myself included. I'm no exception to that. My name is Tom, and welcome back to the channel. Hello, everyone. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Leg Man. And don't worry, this is not like a typical YouTuber apology, but I am a YouTuber, so I do need to ask if you enjoy my content, if you enjoy my coverage of strategy RPGs, regular RPGs, or anything else on the channel, a like and a subscription would be very much appreciated. So what is this mistake that I have made? What did I do wrong in the eyes of the internet public, especially in the eyes of fans of Final Fantasy Tactics? Well, if you've seen my previous video, you know that I advocated fairly heavily for the nerfing of Orlando, Sid, the Sword Saint, the Thunder God himself in Final Fantasy Tactics, The War of the Lions. In the eventual remake that I'm sure is absolutely coming around the horizon, please, Mr. Matsuno, don't prove me wrong, I advocated that Sid needed to be brought down. He's absolutely the most powerful character in the game. He breaks the game open over his knee, and to me, it's just not fun. For a lot of people, it is, but to me, it's not. And I think in a game that is as strategically oriented, you know, a tactics game tends to be, as Final Fantasy Tactics, getting a character near the end of the game that can completely bust the whole thing wide open kind of takes the punch out of what is supposed to be the grand finale of this grueling journey that you've gone through. A lot of you didn't like that, and I have to apologize, because clearly I didn't double down hard enough on why I feel like Thunder God Sid or Landu, the Sword Saint himself, needs to be nerfed, not into the ground, but why he absolutely needs to be nerfed because he absolutely makes the game less fun, and I'm going to stand by that with proof today, because you can still have Orlando nerfed and still have him be the most powerful character in the game and still fulfill his role as the Sword Saints. We're going to talk about it today. Bring your down votes. Bring your hate comments. I don't care. We're talking about it. Facts. There's three axes that we need to talk about today in terms of why Orlando is so busted. The equipment that he comes in with, his base stats, and his class. We're going to go through them in that order because I want to talk about the things that could be changed before we talk about the things that should not be changed. So first off, Orlando's equipment. What makes Orlando's equipment so strong? What does he come equipped with? Well, it's pretty simple. He comes in with a full set of the strongest purchasable armor in the game, so he's got a lot of HP, very good defensive values with his shield. He comes in with a bracer, an accessory that gives him a whopping plus three to his attack, which is disgustingly strong and not really available at that point in the game unless you did some insane random battle grinding. And then he comes in with the piece de resistance, the Excalibur. And if you're at all a fan of anything to do with fantasy, let alone Final Fantasy, you know that a sword called the Excalibur is probably going to be disgustingly strong. And it is absolutely the case that it's disgustingly strong here. It's got some of the best physical attack values in the game. It's a knight sword, so it's just naturally going to be better than regular swords. And, most importantly, it comes with a permanent haste buff. So, the character that it's equipped on comes into the battle with the haste skill, and will pretty much have that skill for the rest of the game, so long as you leave the sword on them. Which, as I'm sure you can imagine, is pretty nasty. This first axis, I don't see any need to change anything. When you get a new character, if they come in with some fancy new gear that you don't have available to you yet, kind of a precursor of things to come that you might be able to buy soon or find soon, that's fun. It gives you the opportunity to get, get a little preview of what you're going to soon have on all of your characters, and it serves as a nice little step up in power when you might be struggling at a certain point in the game. You can take his armor and his gear if you want to, put it on someone else, one of your other favorite characters, or you can leave it on Orlando and just have him be extremely strong. Cool, that's good. I've had people who tell me that, oh, maybe the Excalibur should be nerfed, and I don't necessarily agree with that, because the Excalibur, while it is Orlando's sword, is not exclusive to him, right? If he was the only one who could wield it, if this was like a King Arthur situation and only the Chosen One can wield the blade, then yeah, maybe that would be a vector for a change that would be warranted. But I don't think it is here, because you can take it and you can put it on whoever you want. If you really love Agrius and you want her to have a permanent haste buff, take the Excalibur off Orlando and give it to her. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. If you have a frontline generic knight that you've been using the whole game and you just want them to be able to get on the front line faster and start breaking people's gear and absorbing hits, give them the Excalibur. Get them there faster. Totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Or leave it on Orlando. Let him be really fast. Let him strike like thunder, like his name would imply. Cool. Good. I've got no problem with that. The fact that it is a versatile piece of gear that you can put on anyone tells me that it doesn't need to be nerfed, because you're in the late game at this point. You're finding rare gear, you're finding powerful stuff. The Excalibur is really, really strong, but it's not the only powerful piece of gear you're going to find by the time you beat the game, so I think that's fine. The second vector that we need to talk about here is Orlando's stats, and this is where 
the really definitive need for nerfs comes in. And this is the point that I think a lot of people tend to miss when I'm talking about why Orlando needs to be nerfed. Orlando's stats are outlandishly overtuned considering everything else that he has going on. Let's look at this here. Orlando has the best HP in the game. He has some of the best MP in the game for literally no reason because you don't need mana to use any of his abilities. He has some of the best speed in the game, which is insane. Yes, he's the Thunder God, I know, but he's also kitted out in full heavy armor and is a magical swordsman. Like, he doesn't need to be second only to, like, Mustadio for speed, but it's there. His physical attack is, like, the second best in the game after Rice in her dragon form, which, like, yeah, I would hope a normal human is not quite as physically strong as a literal dragon. And then his magic attack is rank B, which is still good and is still better than, like, a lot of other characters but is completely unneeded because your skills all use your physical attack. Like, you don't... He doesn't need magic attack at all. He also has a natural four move, which in comparison to someone like Agris, who's one of your more comparable points to look at, is one move higher than her for no reason. And you can start to get a picture here if you have any idea of how the game functions or even just how tactics games function, why this would make him extremely strong. Yes, he's a legendary hero from the previous war. Yes, he comes in at a very late point in the game. But regardless, he comes in with such inflated stats that he puts all of your other characters who you've been spending so much time and attention raising to shame. As a point of comparison, with all those huge stats that Orlando has, let's look at Ramza, our hero. And no, Ramza does not need to be the strongest character in the game, but, like, when you get some, well, not some dude, because he's Thunder God Sid, but still, when you get a character that you just bring onto your team and he blows the hero out of the water, it's like, it's a little rough. So, as a point of comparison, Orlando beats Ramza in HP, MP, speed, and physical attack, and they're matched in magical attack. <laughs> as another point of comparison, let's look at Agris, who again is kind of the closest analog to Orlando that you're likely to have until we start talking about Meliodul, which we will in a second. Orlando beats Agris in HP, MP, speed, physical attack, and is matched in magical attack. And note, the only thing that Agris has going for her that isn't kind of resoundingly average in terms of stats is her HP. Orlando still beats her in it. Let's look now at Meliodul, shall we? Meliodul, a divine knight, similar, again, to Orlando, is beat in HP, MP, speed, <laughs> physical attack, and magical attack, all axes. The only thing that she's equivalent to Orlando on is her move range, which is like, whatever. It's alarming how powerful Orlando is, just in terms of stats. You could make Orlando into any class that you want, and he'll be better than most other characters at it. That feels wrong. Like when you get a character just handed to you for free that is able to blow every other character you have out of the water, that just doesn't feel good in a tactics game to me. To some of you, it might. And I can already hear the chorus of, well, just don't use him coming in. Don't worry, we'll get to that at the end, but you're wrong. Finally, I wanna talk about the actual Sword Saint class that Orlando has. And this is the point where I think absolutely zero changes need to be made, and the point where no matter what changes you make to Orlando, if you leave Sword Saint alone, it proves that he's still one of the most insanely strong characters in the game. So what is Sword Saint? Sword Saint is Holy Knight, Divine Knight, and Fell Knight, Dark Knight, however you want to think about it, all rolled into one. Orlando has the sword skills of every single magical swordsman class other than Beowulf's Templar in the game rolled into one. That gives him big AoE status application attacks that deal a lot of damage from the Holy Knight skills. It gives him single target, extremely high damage, armor and equipment rending skills through Divine Knight. And it gives him the ability to drain HP and drain MP while also, again, dealing really good damage to anyone in the game through Fell Knight slash Dark Knight. For those of you who are tactically minded, you should be able to see that level of versatility and the fact that you can have all of those skills rolled into one character when before you needed individual characters in your very limited deployment slot team to be able to do that, you can see why that's really, really strong and really, really valuable. You could literally have Orlando have the base stats and the growth rates of a squire, and he'd still be one of the most powerful characters in the game, even if you took like, Excalibur out of the equation, just because he has so much going for him. 
being able to stasis sword something, being able to judgment bolt something, being able to divine ruination something to clear out large swaths of enemies, silence them, stop them, confuse them, see a big enemy on the battlefield that has a lot of HP and a dangerous weapon or a dangerous piece of armor, he can break it. Is he taking some hits and you need to be able to heal him up? Well, don't worry, you don't need a white mage for that. He can just drain the HP out of an enemy. Again, probably kill them or nearly kill them and then recover all that HP for himself. Hell, you have MP shield on him. Do you make use of his really good MP stat so he has even more HP? What if his MP starts to run out? Don't worry, you can just drain MP with his other Dark Knight ability. It's like, <laughs> it's so insanely strong. And bringing his stats down to bring him a little bit more in line with the rest of your team is still in no way, shape, or form going to remove him from the top slot as the best character in the game. Relax. And this brings me to my point where everyone in my comments, not everyone, a lot of people were agreeing that Thunder God Sid needed to be nerfed, but a lot of people in my comments were yelling at me saying, well, just don't use him. He shouldn't be nerfed. He's the Thunder God. He's the most powerful character in the game for a reason, yada, yada, yada. Let people have their fun with it, yada, yada, yada. Listen, I want to use Orlando. Why? Because he's a badass. He's a hero of the 50 Years War. He's one of the only reasonable authority figures who actually listens to Roms over the course of the entire game. His son is the reason that we have the story of Final Fantasy Tactics as delivered to us in-universe by Arislam. He is so cool. And he's Sid. He's this game's Sid. Every Final Fantasy has a Sid, and they're always awesome. Of course I want to use Sid. Look at him. Look at how badass he is. But I don't want to use him if it completely breaks the game in half. So I'd rather there be a compromise. I'd rather his stats be brought down a bit so that he's still, again, the most powerful character in the game through sheer versatility and capability alone, but not have him feel like he just outclasses everyone else, when the entire rest of the game is about figuring out how to build up a team with the capabilities that you want, how to put different skill sets together to eke out as much power as you can and start overcoming the challenge of the game. Not just say, well, I use this one character, he can solo the whole game, cool. Like, that's so boring, man. I don't care. I just don't care. It's just boring. I think it needs to be changed in the eventual Final Fantasy Tactics remake. So that's it. That's my double down. Um, <laughs> again, bring your hate comments. Bring your down votes. Got a lot of nasty people who were extremely offended that I wanted Thunder God Sid nerfed. I, like, truly degenerate, deranged things. And uh, I don't care. I don't care. I'm sticking to my guns on this because I'm right. And if you don't like that, I apologize. But I think it'll make a better game overall. And that's what I care about. I want Final Fantasy Tactics to be seen as the absolute epitome of any potential turn-based strategy RPG and changes like nerfing Orlando are making that a reality. Hopefully. Mr. Mont Snow, please. Again, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. If you enjoyed this little bit of a rant and me bringing the evidence to back up my statements of why I believe that this is an important change, then again, consider liking and subscribing. There's plenty of turn-based strategy content to come. I hope that you've been enjoying what we've already done. With that said, going to call this one here. I hope you all have a good night. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember... Be good to each other. Bye now.